when uh, we refer to Michel Foucault, particularly in literary theory, there are number of concepts on which he designs or produces his idea of or his critique of uh, of uh, relationships, existing relationships, or within uh, the relationship between power and uh, knowledge and body and uh, uh, also, for example, institutions and, uh, for example, uh, how things get constituted in mm. hierarchies and so on and so forth. And then, uh, in a way, he places everything in a domain called discourse, where he is at the same time critiquing the hierarchies by means of discursiveness. So, uh, uh, how would you like to put this? for students of literary theory, uh, uh, particularly focusing on power, power relationships and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. so that they may easily uh, identify this knowledge with the text they study in their courses. Mm -hmm. No, um, I personally think that uh, the first important lesson that uh, students need to uh, uh, deeply inculcate in their mind when they are approaching Foucault's idea of power mm. is that Foucault is not talking about a hierarchized notion of power. That is to say, it's not a vertically understandable theory of power. Mm. Huh? In other words, we can simplify this by saying that power is not something that 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 flows from some point of uh, location above mm. to the uh, person who is sitting beneath it in, in the subaltern position. Right? Mm. So it's not a one-way sort of traffic. It's not a top-down kind of a mm. traffic that mm. Foucault would uh, uh, put forward in his postulations on power. Mm. For Foucault, power is something that needs to be understood in terms of the contingent power, subject positions that we, we occupy, that, that different subjects occupy in a co-wave-like structure. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, uh, to begin with, it's not a hierarchical notion of power that he comes up with, mm -hmm. which is the general popular understanding of power, that there is somebody who is powerful, there is somebody who is less powerful, and the more powerful will exert some kind of, yes. exercise some kind of power on the less powerful. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is not exactly the notion of power that Foucault uh, comes up with. Foucault's notion of power is a departure from that. Mm. Now, having said that, what are the texts that uh, give us some sense of Foucault's notion of power? Um, I, there, are, there are many of them uh, on power knowledge, uh, but uh, I personally would prefer to mention at least two texts uh, immediately at this point. One is History of Sexuality, first volume, where Foucault talks about the idea of biopower, which is very important for our times as well. Mm. Uh, and the other text is um, Discipline and Punish, where Foucault links the idea of surveillance. Mm. So now we live in an age of uh, camera, CCTV mm. cameras, we are always under surveillance. Mm. Um, so how he links surveillance with the concept of power. And he does that in Discipline and Punish. He talks about the idea of the panopticon, mm. the Benthamite notion of panopticon, yeah. where there is a center pillar through which uh, the, the people who are surveilling uh, the convicted people mm. in the prison house, which is surrounding the main pillar. Mm. And that kind of structure, that kind of architecture is the mm. classical notion of panopticism in the Benthamite way. Yeah. And Foucault changes it in, in, in and based so many ways. designed uh, that uh, yes, graphically. Yeah, graphically. Okay, yes. but uh, it was, but was was it ever implemented in reality? It was not directly implemented in reality. Okay, but but there are different other ways of solving that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the two texts that one can talk about. I would say, in relation to how Foucault thinks of power. Mm. Now, and let us talk about history of sexuality. 
If you look at history of sexuality, volume one, uh, how does the text begin? The text begins with uh, a very interesting reference to uh, the Victorian uh, morality, the Victorian perceptions on sexuality. Mm. Now, one has to be very clear about uh, a difference between sex and sexuality here. Mm. Sex, the actual act of having sex, mm. is not what Foucault is talking about. Foucault is talking about the discursivization, the discourse formation around sexuality. So when you talk about sex, it becomes sexuality, that kind of thing. Mm. And he, at the beginning, draws a differentiation between, a kind of distinction between ars uh, erotica and sciencia sexualis. And he goes on to say that ars erotica is something that is practiced, mm. which is more about enhancing pleasures. We live in a land of Kama Sutra, etc. So Kama Sutra, if you look at that text, it talks about how one can enhance pleasure by changing different sex positions, etc. and different uh, kala, different mm. arts. Mm. So it's more about focus, <coughs> focusing on the pleasure quotient of the act of sex. Mm. But if you look at the Western culture, uh, and, and Foucault says this, uh, in so many words, and he uses a particular term called sciencia sexualis. He says that sexuality is something that is talked about, discussed in so many ways. So there is a discourse of, of sex that becomes sexuality. So it's how you produce it in knowledge. Exactly. So that yeah. that discourse yeah. formation, how, how, how you know it, it uh, becomes a knowable kind of that. Thing. That exactly. So that becomes a discourse. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that is what we would call sexuality. We need to clear about, be clear about that. Mm. Sex and sexuality difference. Now, in the initial uh, chapters, Foucault says something very interesting. He says that we have uh, a typical understanding of sexuality. We think that talking about sexuality is a taboo. And it is true that it is a taboo, mm. uh, at least in the Victorian morality uh, sense. And, um, but we need to go beyond that understanding. We need to go beyond that understanding in the sense that there are also domains in our times, mm. there are different registers where mm. you are not simply um, censored, you are not asked not to speak about sex or sexuality, but you are rather incited, you mm. are provoked, you are asked to talk about your fantasies, your desires, your sexual activities, your perversions, all kinds of things. Mm. And what are those domains? The domain of psychoanalysis. Mm -hmm. You go to the psychoanalyst, psychoanalyst chamber, you talk about uh, your desire, your fantasies, your perversions, your anxieties, mm -hmm. things that you wouldn't otherwise discuss in a public yeah. domain. Yeah. So the, the modern civilization therefore uh, creates a domain mm -hmm. where you are placed in a situation uh, like that and you confess, you talk about your...